Hi, uh, this is Kyle Haynes uh, speaking technically with Source Allies, and today we're going to go over uh, AI, right? So it's the hot new thing that's been kind of the last six to seven uh, months taking over a lot of the uh, software development industry. A lot of the things that I've seen with it recently have been ideas where you can take big blocks of code or, or big requirements lists and send them into a place like ChatGPT and it'll write all your code for you. Uh, as a developer that's been in the industry for a little while, that's kind of scary to me. Uh, and one of the approaches, um, instead, of, instead of just letting AI do everything from your implementation to your unit tests to describing all your code, one of, the, one of the ways that I've been playing with that I kind of enjoy using AI has been to use it in a TDD approach. Uh, so in TDD, right, we usually write unit tests first, see them fail, and then write the implementation. So I thought uh, today we could kind of walk through what that would look like. Uh, so we'll go real quick here into IntelliJ. So I've got IntelliJ. This is actually the latest EAP version of IntelliJ. It has uh, what JetBrains is calling their AI Assistant. It's just a plugin uh, that's going to get used where you'll type in some prompts to it, you'll write some code, and it'll send that data off to, I believe it's OpenAI's, uh, like a GPT-4 backend. So we can take some of this code, and what we're gonna do is give it a prompt. Uh, we're gonna start saying, hey, you're a professional Java developer, we're gonna do TDD, I'm gonna give you code that does not pass, and I want you to write the implementation. So in a pure TDD form here, we'll run our tests, we'll see that they're failing. Now what we're going to try to build today is a little bit of a password validator, so we'll give it a string of some sort of password, and then we will get back a boolean yes-no on whether or not that password is valid based on our business requirements. Uh, so the first test we have here is given a password that is not at least 12 characters long, it should return false. So it's pretty standard, you know, most places where you do a password, you need to have it be a certain length. This, uh, we put in that test that is failing into the AI, it'll realize it, uh, realize what we've given it, start giving us some info, and then it will give us uh, what we think we should put as our code. So, in this scenario, it's given us if password isn't null and password is greater than 12, we'll pass. So, we had red, we should have green now, tests are passing, let's move on to the next test. Alright, in this example, we have a password that does not have at least one digit should return false. So again, most passwords anymore, you need to have some sort of number in your password to get it to pass. Same scenario here, we are red, we can copy and paste that guy over here and send it off to AI Assistant, and AI Assistant will run through, realize, and again, because it's got history of the requirement we had before, it'll take and kind of combine both of our unit tests into one implementation that'll pass both. So, well, the same thing, we also have this regular expression here to make sure we check a digit. So in my mind, that looks like it'll pass, but luckily we have the tests, we can pass, they're green. All right, next requirement. This is a scenario for a password that does not contain a special character. So in the previous two tests, we've pretty much used the name of the test as enough information to send off to AI Assistant here uh, about, and it, and it can figure out what to do, right? In this scenario, if we just say it doesn't contain a special character, it's hard to know exactly what special characters we might want to talk about. Uh, for our business use case, in this example, we're just going to use these three. And so we can actually include a little comment in there to let AI Assistant know which special characters we're uh, worried about for our use case. So we've got a test that fails. We'll send it back off and it should give us some info, hopefully recognizing we only want those three and write a unit test that'll get those to pass. All right, so we have another regular expression here. We'll run the tests and we're golden. All right, one more test and then we'll talk a little bit more. So these tests before have been kind of standard standard tests you, you'd probably have for a password implementation. This one is more of a uh, weird business requirement, right? We've all been writing code where the business says, hey, you should write it this way, or you should write it that way. And sometimes as a developer, you're like, ah, it doesn't really make sense. This test is trying to mimic that. Uh, so this is a password, a test, where we already have digits in our password. This is an example where the digits in our password have to add up to exactly 12, otherwise the password isn't valid. So it doesn't make any sense, but right now our password has digits, but they only add up to 11. So we expect that test to fail. And it does. So we can take that test and send it off to AI Assistant. 
and it'll probably tell us we're crazy. I'm not sure. Uh, no, it didn't, but that's okay. All right, so we can take this guy and we can paste it in. And basically what it's doing is what we had before. And it says, hey, if you passed everything we had before, sum up all the digits. And if they're exactly equal to 12, we'll call it good. So at this point, we are, oh, we're not green. I've never seen that fail before. <laughs> oh, let's see why it blew up. Usually it's good at that. Son of a gun, which one failed? 59. This one didn't pass. Oh, it's doing, oh, this is wrong. Uh, it wants to do that. It was backwards. Oh my goodness. Look at that. It wasn't right. Uh, cool. All right, we fixed it. So AI is close, but not right all the time. The beauty is we had a test there to make sure uh, that we could get the right value. So it had digit and numeric value flipped around. Interesting. Okay. Um, okay, so now we have, at this point, all of our tests that verify from what we know all of our business requirements at this point if we want to we can refactor this however we want we can have ai help us refactor it we have lots of options but the beauty is that we have all these unit tests and we know from the business's standpoint they're getting what they asked for from a developer standpoint we're confident in what we're delivering all that's here because we have the tests so what i want to do is talk about now that we've kind of got our tests working and we know that this block of code, whether we like it or not, this block of code is doing what we and what the business want it to do. I want to go the other direction. So kind of I was talking earlier about a lot of the AI hype, I guess, recently has been around. You can just paste a block of code and it'll generate tests for you. Even here, you can just say, ask AI assistant for generating tests. So it's like, okay, we'll just try it out and we'll see how it works. So we can say generate tests for this method and we can paste in the block of code and it'll look through, try to figure out what it's doing <clears throat> and then give us back some results. So let's see, these are all separate tests. So we should be able to take all these guys, copy them and we'll add them in down here at the bottom. And it's all going under this class under tests. So we can just take this and we can replace all that, so we'll just call validate. All right, let's just see if these pass. What I'm anticipating happening, and it did happen, um, it's pretty good at handling the normal use cases. The issue we're gonna run into on line 89 here, if we go down and find 89, is this test is just to test a valid check digit sum. So this is checking that this all adds up to 12. This is a whatever, 11 plus a whole bunch more is more than 12. This is one of those scenarios where AI is not great or I haven't seen it been great yet about weird edge cases. And it's not that weird. I mean, it's even got code called out about digit sums adding up to 12, but it can't handle that adding up to 12. So we can go ahead and like comment that one out and see if we get these to pass. And they're all green at this point, but the only tests that it added that it that passed right away are the false ones that verify an invalid password. So at this point as a developer, if I've taken a block of code and I had it generate tests and the only tests it generated were like invalid tests, I'm not even sure as a developer that what it's spit out in this scenario are like maybe they're all failing for the exact same reason. It's hard to it's hard to know that, right? So I think this is just one of those things where I don't think AI is there yet. These models aren't quite ready for everything. It's kind of cool to see it read your code and spit stuff out, but I don't think it's ready for prime time quite yet. However, I do think it's pretty decent at if you TDD it, I think it's pretty close to prime time ready to go. Obviously we saw the issue up here with this guy going the wrong way, but you can get a lot of code written pretty quick and as you TDD it, you're going to be sure that you're confident in your code and that you're giving the business uh, what they're kind of asking for. So uh, hopefully it's been a good introduction to AI. Hopefully it's kind of been a fun intro with TDD. This has been Kyle Haynes speaking technically with Source Allies. Do you have a topic that you want to see covered? Comment it down below. Or if you want to know more about Source Allies, check out our website in either the description or our profile. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.